we're going to continue onward right from where we left off in the previous video. I'm just scrolling down in part 025, matrices and plotting. In fact, I don't need this anymore. And we're going to read from file this unemployment stats.csv, and we're going to do a little bit of calculations and processing on it just to talk about how to read data from file, since I imagine that's very frequently what folks are going to want to be doing with MATLAB. Now, the data itself, let's look at in the browser. So I'm just in uh, my Google Drive right here. You can find a link to all the files uh, in the video descriptions, and you can download all this stuff. Here's the unemployment stats.csv. Let's double click and open that up. All right, and here's our data. This is real world data, as was the previous. This one contains unemployment rates in the state of New Mexico from 2011 through 2020. Let's see if I can zoom in just a little bit here. Yeah, so zoom in a little bit. We have years along the left column. We have months along the top row. Let's go back into MATLAB. In the previous video, I used read table to read in the data because some of the data was numeric and some of the data was text or strings. Here I'm going to use read matrix to just read in the body. So I'm not going to be reading in the column labels because those are text. So read matrix is just going to give me the numbers. But that's what I want to deal with and work with for this example. So I'm going to read the data into a variable I just, you know, uncreatively named data. And that's what we're going to work with. Let's run this section, control enter. All right. And so one question we might want to ask is let's compare the average unemployment rate in 2011 to 2020. So to do that, I've got my data. This is a matrix. And I'm going to ask for the average of row one, columns two through the end, and put that in a variable. And I'm going to compare that to the same calculation, but instead of row one, I'm going to say row end, the very last row. And I'm going to put that into a different variable. I display them out. Here we go. Here's the average unemployment in 2011. Here's the average for 2020. End is such a useful provided feature of MATLAB to be able to say, go all the way to the last column, since the end is after the comma, or go to the last row if end is before the comma. It's context sensitive, which is pretty neat. Why am I skipping column one? I'm just going from two to the end. Well, if we look carefully at the data, we'll realize we don't actually want to average in the first column because that's a year. So averaging 2012 with a bunch of values close to seven is really going to skew our unemployment number. Continuing on down, let's look at average unemployment over time. Now, because the mean and other functions in MATLAB operate on a per column basis, I need to transpose the data that I'm working with. Because if I just take the average of the data as given, going back to that spreadsheet, what I'm going to get is the average of all the Januaries and all the Februaries and all the Marches. That's not what I want. I want the average for the whole year and then for this whole year. So I need to transform these rows into columns, which is exactly what transpose does. So I transpose from the data matrix, all rows, columns two through the end, and then I just take the mean. Now, initially I was just lazy and I said years, eh, just make it a vector one through 10. And then we'll plot out years on the x-axis, average rates on the y-axis, and we'll label our axes and give it a title. So let's run it. All right, and there we go. You can um, see where COVID hit on this graph, which is really unfortunate. But our x-axis is really not very nice, and we would like it to actually display the years in a readable format. Well, good news, that's the data in column one. So what we can type in here is instead of one through 10, data from all the rows, comma, column one. And now if we try it again, well, I don't have a close all in this section, so nothing happens, which is really unfortunate. So I'm gonna add in close all, try it again, control enter, and there it pops right up. And our x-axis is actually easy to read this time. Great. Just keeping it short on this video, just some reading in from file, a little bit of manipulation and some plotting. In the next video, we're going to look more at plotting, although not the deepest dive, just sort of introductory. And then we'll move on from there. We're still going to be working in part 025 matrices and plotting.